So, Intel versus AMD, but with a twist. Neither of these systems have a dedicated GPU. Both of them are running just the integrated graphics on the CPU. Now, both of these teams have the best what they can offer. On this side, the 8-core Ryzen 7 5700G, and on this one, the Core i9-11900K, also 8-core chip. What I want to know is, as a creator, would it be possible to edit some of the video without the dedicated graphics card on Premiere Pro, for example? You know, just while you're waiting for your graphics card to arrive. Well, let's find out. The Intel is called like the best gaming chip, whereas this one is just like somewhere in the middle. The Intel also costs quite a bit more. I think it's important to mention the test bench setup. So both of them are kind of like open air test bench setups but we're both running the same RAM with the same speed of RAM. The only thing I've changed with the AMD's CPU configuration on BIOS is enabled position boost overdrive just to push a little bit more power through because it's only 65 watt chip whereas the Intel is 125 watt and Intel actually does it kind of on stock setting where it pushes so much more power through the chip that it's rated so we just enabled that on AMD as well. So Premiere Pro is open. Both of these Premiere Pro things are exactly the same projects as you can see. Now, if you wanna just make sure which one is which, then if you look like on the top of the Premiere Pro over here, you can see AMD Ryzen as one of them. And then on this side, we have Intel. So you know like which PC is which and which one are we using. So let's start with Intel. So this is 11900K. So this is an um, 8 bit, 420, 60 frames per second, 4K clip. And if you're looking at this timeline performance, I mean, this is very, very good. This is hardware accelerated. So the actual graphics is playing this back. But when we pressing play, 10 frames we drop 10 frames let's press play again yeah it starts a little bit to drop frames but then keeps playing like the rest of the system so if we look at what's used the gpu is 80 percent used over here as you can see this is completely ed edible editable this is completely editable of codec over here if you're using like 8-bit 4k footage and this is full resolution if we put it to half resolution I mean, check this out. This is buttery, buttery, buttery smooth. Absolutely no problem. As you can see, this is not very good. When moving around on the timeline, it's not quite as smooth as Intel, really, I would say. But still, I think it's all right. If you press play, we're doing the same, dropping a few frames, but a little bit less than Intel. Let's have a look at over here. And the graphics is less used. It looks like the graphics has more power and oomph to it, but maybe probably the Intel Quick Sync works better on Premiere Pro than on the AMD Ryzen on, on this particular codec. Now, actually, when it's loaded a little bit, to be honest, it's quite smooth, actually. Yeah, I think Intel's like producing more frames on the timeline, but both of them are pretty, pretty smooth and like able to play this back so 8-bit 420 codec 4k both of them are pretty good but i think intel has a little bit of an edge let's move on to this is 10-bit 420 so the bit depth has uh, changed a little bit it's still um h264 so not high efficiency codec okay let's press play over here looks like it's playing it back quite easily here and um, as you can see the memory usage goes up quite a bit because our memory is actually using the gpu memory and it's using the actual system memory as well so the memory is using both job let's move on to intel let's do exactly the same thing over here yeah i think the quick sync is truly like a bit quicker there's a little bit like artifacts when when playing around with intel it makes some kind of weird squares not sure if you can see that on the screen but if you press play 33% used Intel graphics. I think both of these are actually very, very similar. Like the timeline moving on the header is I think a little bit like snappier on Intel just because of the quick sync system, how they've utilized the hardware over there and um, that's better. So I think a little bit of an edge here to Intel as well. Let's move on to 422. So now this is completely CPU bound codec. So if we press this play now here as you can see our gpu is not doing as much and our cpu here boom 
should be doing quite a bit as you can see 40 obviously the gpu is still like playing it back but as you can see the video decoding like on here is just playing it back but here the 422 we're dropping one frame doing exactly the same 422 it's like all right not bad actually full resolution zero frames dropped let's have a look at the cpu is utilized about 30 percent it's it's all right looks like it's playing it back no problem timeline performance actually is quite all right as well timeline is a bit choppy as well but i think they're both equal on this one let's try um a 4 to 2 60 frames per second as well so this is a little bit more just a lot more frames yeah intel is dropping constantly footage over here of frames the gpu is completely maxed out cpu is like almost there pressing play over here full resolution 17 frame dropped both of the dropping frames let's see which drops more frames looks like amd gpu actually has more overhead headroom because it's utilized less but just the drivers and i think how adobe is working there's a better like driver support and just hardware support on intel than on amd because as you can see intel gpu is like 100 percent utilized and cpu is about 80 90 percent utilized and over this timeline we dropped 142 frames let's have a look at amd look there was about maybe 40% utilized and 70 to 80% utilized. So much less utilized and 270 frames dropped. Just a little conclusion on the side over here. If you have mirrorless footage, like from any of the cameras, 10-bit, 8-bit, 4K, whatever frame rates, then the Intel one actually, because of the quick sync on Adobe Premiere Pro, has an edge over here. Let's move on to a little bit more complex codex. We have the Red Raw 4K, okay? This is full resolution. Let's have a look. How well does this work over here? Wow, okay, this is very, very smooth. Look at this. This is smooth as anything. So I'm just gonna press play over here because that's very smooth. Let's see on the Intel system. I don't know if you can notice this, but on here, the AMD was very like smooth on the playback, whereas the Intel is some kind of like, there's like artifacts over here when it's when it's playing back and it, it's smooth, but it, it there is some artifacts. So let's press play and see if it can play it back. Okay, AMD finished now. And we dropped two frames, so basically no frames. This could have been like just an error, you know. And how many? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Intel now dropped 209 frames compared to basically no frames on the AMD. So when we're comparing red footage, the AMD has a much better edge than Intel over here. Let's move on to Canon C200. And we're gonna put this on like half resolution half the resolution and it's quite smooth but there's quite a lot of artifacts as well it looks like like some random glitches and stuff are going on happening over there so it's playing it back actually not bad on half the resolution let's move on to the amd system over here let's have a look at this as well so half the resolution okay this is interesting so what i can notice over here is that amd has less artifacts actually so the AMD system, what I'm scrolling through, is is very, as smooth as Intel's, but it doesn't have as much artifacts. So I would say like the timeline performance is a little bit better over here. So let me just press play somewhere over here and let's see what happens. Seems like it's playing it back no problem. Let's move back to the Intel system. Intel system here is still playing it back, but as you can see, there's like artifacts. There's like some kind of stripes and things going through. It doesn't look as good over here. So yeah, both of them are equal, but I'd still give a little bit of an edge to the Ryzen system just because of the less artifacts and it just feels like it's it's a bit better. Red 5K now, okay? Full resolution, 5K footage. Timeline, it's all right, but it's hard to know here because there's not a lot of movement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press play and see how many frames we're dropping. I mean, looks like it's a bit more choppier on the intel system but let's just press play see what happens on the amd system we dropped 185 frames we understand 
5K is already a little bit difficult. It looks like the CPU is the bottleneck over here, as you can see. Eight cores just isn't quite enough to start playing back 5K footage. And then on the Intel, we are, have lost 228. So Intel did even, even worse. So if you look here, Intel had like GPU and CPU maxed out. So let's move on to red 6K codec. Let's see if there's any difference over here. I mean, check this. Intel's constantly pulling like about 183, 85, 190 watts to play this back. Let's move on to 6K. Whoa! Check the timeline performance here on Ryzen system. This is completely acceptable. So if we press play, let's see what happens. But that was very, very interesting. So we're pressing play. Look, the Ryzen system is pulling less than half of the about 70 to 80 watts of power. And the CPU was the bottleneck over here. Let's have a look what happened on the Intel system. We dropped 215 frames. AMD dropped 230 frames. That's interesting. So let's go to B-RAW 6K, which is quite an easy codec to edit. We're looking at the timeline performance over here. Intel has some artifacts going on. But looks like you could do some B-RAW editing over here. That's no problem. Okay, see, the similar thing. Like when moving around the timeline, AMD, funnily enough, even though it maybe produces slightly less frames on the scrubbing, it is smooth. And it's not as distracting seeing some kind of artifacts on the timeline. Because for me as an editor, it would make me feel like, whoa, is, is the footage like shot weird? Is there some corruption of the files? what's going on over there on the intel system but in here i know okay it's been shot very good let's press play let's see what happens full resolution like full eight uh, 6k timeline playback over here 103 frames dropped over here what is the bottleneck probably the gpu over here a lot of memory is being used here as well 121 frames dropped whoa intel still actually won on this for some reason, AMD can't just play it back. Even though there's much more headroom, as you can see the GPU over here, it's still dropping a lot more frames than um, Intel. 256, so we'll still have to give Intel the lead on this one. So might as well just try something ridiculous. This is Canon R5 8K, and we're gonna start quarter of resolution because there's no point even trying a full resolution. But this, Yo, this is absolutely smooth. But there's still some artifacts going on, like some weird stripes, like some blocking or whatever it's called. I'm just gonna press play because that was pretty impressive. Okay, that is smooth. And I would say this is better on much better in AMD just because there's less artifacts. The artifacts on Intel is really, really annoying. So Intel's almost finished this sequence and Intel has actually dropped two frames during this playback, which is very interesting. So you can definitely edit some even R5 footage if you don't have a GPU on the Intel 11900K. So AMD at the moment is dropping zero frames. Zero frames dropped. I think we're gonna have to give this to the AMD system. I think red raw 8k and 12k there's no point in testing these because like if you're editing these types of footage you probably have the cash to actually buy a dedicated dedicated gpu as well so there's no point in actually trying that so the conclusion is this both of these chips can actually edit some of the mirrorless camera footage like 4k 60 frames per second up to there 422 or 420 GPU accelerated or not, both of them can actually do, but Intel has an edge over there just because of the quick sync support on the Premiere Pro and how it utilizes this iGPU inside there. It is better, it's smoother experience. There might be a little bit more RT effects, but that's that. Now, the interesting thing here is that AMD actually has quite a lot more overhead in terms of the upgradability because this one is as good as it gets on Intel system. So if you get like another GPU, your CPU is, is that's it. That's to the wall. You can't go anywhere else. Whereas on the AMD, there's quite a bit of upgrades actually there. If you get a GPU there and then you can actually put much better CPUs in there. Ryzen 9s, there's a few Ryzen 9s over there, which is amazing. The AMD also uses much less energy 
or electricity. It's got a little bit of an edge over there if you're thinking about few upgrade path. For this moment, at this like point in time, without the dedicated GPU, we have to give the win to Intel. So this was Premiere Pro. If you want to know what the difference is in Resolve, stay tuned for the next video. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.